Welcome to the lesson on the skeletal system. In this lesson, we'll be discussing the general function of the skeletal system overall. We'll be labeling the skeletal system diagram that's in your blue book. We'll also be discussing what bone is made of and its functions, as well as what is cartilage, what are tendons and ligaments. And we'll finish the lesson on uh, by discussing joints and we'll talk about five different joints and give examples of each. All right, why do organisms need a skeletal system? A skeletal system is a support system that is necessary when an animal is too big to support its weight through the effects of water pressure in the cells. Water, as you may know, um, weighs a lot, and therefore the larger organism you are, um, if you didn't have a skeletal system, um, all that weight and pressure would push you down to be just a big blob on the floor. You wouldn't be able to support yourself. So that's the function of the skeletal system. Next, we're going to label the human skeletal system diagram that's in your blue workbook. So if you don't have that, go ahead and grab it, pause the video, and come back. And we're going to go ahead now and get started here with structure one, which is the cranium, um, common word skull, but you're, you'd use the word cranium there, the mandible, which is the jaw, and of course three all together, the mandible and the cranium together make up the skull, the clavicle, which is your collarbone, The pectoral girdle, which encompasses this entire shoulder area. The scapula, which is the bone on the back of your shoulder. The sternum, which connects your rib cage down the middle of your chest. The ribs. The humerus, which is your upper arm. The spine, which of course supports your spinal cord. Vertebra, the individual bones that make up your spine. The pelvic girdle, which is this entire um, set of bones in here which includes the pelvis. And then we'll skip here and go to the lower arm bones, which on your thumb side is your radius. And on your pinky side is the ulna. Let's finish out the bones of the hand here. We have the carpals which are in your wrist. We have the metacarpals, which are the first set of bones leading up to your fingers. And then we have the phalanges, which are your fingers itself. Your thigh bone is called the femur. Your kneecap is called the patella. The big bone in your lower leg is called the tibia. And the smaller bone in your lower leg is called the fibula. We have the tarsals. Notice the connection there between the hand and the foot. Carpals for hand, tarsals for foot which would be the bones in your ankle, and then the metatarsals, which are in your foot itself that lead to your toes, which would be the phalanges. Okay? All right, that'll do it for the diagram in the blue book. Now let's take a look at some uh, how bones are put together. All right, bone is made of collagen. 
which is a polysaccharide, and it acts as a glue. So bone is made of collagen and calcium phosphate. And the calcium phosphate functions for density and rigidity. Bone has channels for nerves and blood vessels. And some have a channel down the center for marrow. And this is where blood cells are made. A lot of people have the misconception that your bones are dead. That's not true, though it's what remains after you're dead, after the rest of you gets rotten and eaten away. Um, your bones are very much alive. They are covered with a protective membrane called the parosteum, which is the site of attachment of tendons and ligaments. Bones be tend to become denser and more mineralized as we age. That natural process is called ossification. Some cartilage never ossifies. For example, the cartilage in your ears and the cartilage in many of your joints never ossifies, hardens, and becomes bone. Speaking of cartilage, cartilage is a flexible, connective tissue. It's much like bone, but it lacks the calcium phosphate. So it's without the cal calcium phosphate. So cartilage, then by... Um, analysis up here is mostly made of collagen. Tendons and ligaments are also connective tissue. They're fibrous connective tissue. And you need to know that tendons connect muscles to bones. Ligaments connect bones to bones. You need to know the difference between those two. Tendons connect muscles to bones. Ligaments connect bones to bones. All right, lastly, joints. Joints are connections between bones, and we have five different kinds. We have the hinge joint, example of which are your elbow or your knee, excellent examples of hinge joints. We have the ball and socket, where your upper leg, the femur, goes into your pelvic girdle, and where your humerus and your upper arm inserts into your shoulder are great examples of ball and socket joints. We have gliding joints, such as what are in your wrist and ankle. We have pivot joints. An example of this would be where you're in your neck, where your spinal cord connects into your skull. And the fifth kind are immovable joints, like in your cranium. When you are born, your uh, cranial bones are actually not connected. And this is, of course, so that you can fit through the birth canal and be born. As you age, those joints fuse together, and they become immovable over time. All right, that'll do it for our notes on the skeletal system. Now let's take a look at this next video where Hank will expand on all the concepts discussed here on the skeletal system.